Hi, my name is uh, Matt Hill. I'm the curriculum designer here at MRU. And so these are the walkthrough videos for our monetary policy unit plan. The idea with these is just to give you a sense of what we were thinking when we built um, the particular day's lesson. All right. So in our first day, what we're trying to get at is just some of the absolute basics. So we want students to understand what an interest rate is and then how banks make money in their overall purpose. So the, sorry, this one on here. All right, there we go. All right. So in the bell ringer, what um, you're going to have students um, do is think about lending and borrowing. So if they were borrowing money from their partner, so you want to partner them up, if they're borrowing $20 um, from their partner, what is the most they would pay back? in a month so would they pay back 21 dollars, 22 dollars? they have to pay back more because otherwise why would the person borrow it so you need to sort of make it so the students need the money so you have to say hey all right you need if you really need 20 dollars, you know what is the most and you have to pay back in a month what is the most you would pay back over the 20 dollars? now if you're lending the money what is the least you take back to part with your 20 dollars today so they're they're playing the role of the borrower and the lender and thinking through, okay, you know, do I trust my partner to actually pay me back? If not, I'm going to need a lot more than $20 to lend um, them uh, money. So again, this is just trying to get the students to think about, you know, or, or hint at interest rates and that, all right, when you borrow money, in order for the other person to be incentivized to lend you money, you got to give them back a little more than uh, than the twenty bucks. Um, so we have them pair up, sort of leave them through. Um, they have a sheet uh, to fill out, um, and um, you can see if they can come to an agreement. So you can sort of pick a few of the partners to see. All right, could you come to an agreement about borrowing and lending the money? Um, you know, if the person would be willing to pay back, say twenty. Five dollars, and the lender would be willing to take twenty-five dollars. Okay, that they came to an agreement. So write those down here. I'm gonna pick a few. Write these two just to see, you know, what is the average price uh, if people could come to agreement about borrowing and lending um, twenty dollars. And so what we are hinting at is this idea of interest that the amount that you pay back over the twenty dollars is the interest. And of course, that's the interest and the interest rate would be, you know, so if you're paying back $22, you're paying back, uh, that's a 10% interest rate, you know, two divided by the principal in this case, which is 20 times um, 100%. And so you're starting to get the students like, okay, so this is the price of money in the interest rate is the price of money, how much you have to pay back over the initial amount. Um, is basically your fee for getting access to that money. And that's what you get if you're lending money for give, giving somebody access to your money. So we're just trying to establish the basic idea of what an interest rate is for students. And hopefully this exercise where they have to lend $20 or borrow $20 gets them thinking through it. All right. All right, and then you want to calculate, go back to your previous um, example that you did with your students and calculate the interest and the interest rate. All right, now, of course, the interest rates will vary. Um, you can sort of just uh, talk through this. All right, yeah, so the interest rate is going to be you know, higher if there's like a longer period because, oh, then it increases the uncertainty. Am I actually going to get back? Interest rate may be you know, higher with the amount because obviously there's more risk. Obviously, if you don't trust the borrower, you're going to charge them a higher interest rate. And if I have a bunch of other good alternatives, like if I have another, you know, some good investments, I may require a higher interest rate to give you my money instead of into this other investment. Just, just again, just hinting at this interest rate is going to change a lot depending on the circumstance. All right. So hopefully now we've firmly established what an interest rate is. We've got some interaction with the students where they're borrowing, lending money from, from one another. And now we're going to introduce the concept of banks and what exactly or how how exactly banks um make money so you want to ask them you know because i think a lot of students just think well, hey when i put my money in the bank or when my parents put their money in the bank it's just you know the bank takes it puts it in the vault and there it uh there it stays okay 
So you want to ask them, well, what happens to your money? All right, when you deposit it in the bank, where does it go? Where does that money go? All right. Maybe some students know the answer, the real answer, but I'm, I would guess most people, oh, they just keep it. They keep the money. Okay. Now, of course, that's not what happens. The bank takes my money and then lends it to somebody else. You want to tell students like, all right, if you deposit your money in the bank in like a savings account, the bank's going to pay you a little bit of interest, right? They're going to give you a little bit more for keeping your money at the bank, but then they're going to take your money and they're going to lend it to somebody else and charge them a higher interest rate than they're paying you. So there's going to be this difference in the interest they're paying you and then their interest from the person that they're lending your money to. And so that's how they make money. They're basically going to pay you less than they charge somebody else. If you want, there's this, um, you know, there's this uh, clip from a very old movie at this point. Um, you can play it. If not, you can just say, all right, you know, we see this concept coming up uh, in, in popular culture. But this is this is how banks money. Banks make money. They charge people more interest than they pay you. All right. And this, the econ vocabulary word for this is fractional reserve um, banking. All right. The idea is they're only keeping a part of your money in reserve and they're lending out the rest. So they're only keeping a fraction of your money in reserve and they're lending out the rest of your money. Now, students may at this point being like, well, this is like the best scam in the world. <laughs> like, so they're just taking one, they're just taking my money, lending to somebody else, uh, charging them a higher rate than they're charging me. And I'm like, what is the bank even doing? Like, what like they're just like they're just you know, just moving um this money around. So for that reason, we have this video, one of our high polished videos, which sort of explains the value of uh of banks uh to students like you know how banks connect lenders and borrowers okay and why there's there's at, oh, hopefully they're providing a service so you can play this video we have the various pause points um where you can um ask questions and of course the answers to all these are in our answer sheets so you know you, you can watch the video yourself you can you can check out the answers and sort of guide students through um this video that hopefully explains like all right um you know uh, this is this is the you know idealized version of what uh the service of banks are providing all right so now so we have so we have this nice activity where they're loaning money to each other we've sort of introduced the concept of interest rates we've now talked about um how banks make money and hopefully they've watched a little video that explains to them okay, why the service banks are providing. But now we want to sort of get to, all right, so this is how we do banking. We, have, we do fractional reserve banking. And what exactly are the risks here? So you want to ask the students, what if we all, what if, what if all of us who had our money at the bank went to go ask for our money back at the same time? Now it's our money. You can withdraw your money from the bank at any time. So what if we all do this at the same time? See what students say, see, see what the response is. Now, the answer is the bank doesn't have it. The bank has loaned out our money. Okay. The bank has, you know, given somebody money for a mortgage. That mortgage is going to be paid back over 30 years. So if I go, if we all go ask for our money, the bank's not going to be able to come up with it. You know, they can't just go to the person that they, you know, they lend money for a mortgage and say, hey, you know what? You're supposed to pay that back over 30 years. You know, you got to pay it back today. Sorry, because everyone's asking for their money. So if we all go ask for our money, the bank will not be able to have that. Does, the bank doesn't have that cash on hand and the bank will collapse, right? The bank will go under. So there's a, like there's a, there's, a, there's this fundamental risk built into our banking system. If we have fractional reserve banking, where if everyone asks for their money back, the banks collapse. The analogy here we have on the slides is, all right, you know, when you're playing musical chairs, as long as the music going, everything's fine, you know? As long as the music is playing and everyone's up, everyone's walking around, you know, nothing, nothing, nothing bad's going to happen. But once that music stops, phew, there's not enough chairs for everybody. So as long as we don't all ask for our money back, as long as we're out there listening to the music, you know, going along, oh, the bank's, you know, bank's going, you know, we think you know, our money's safe in the bank. But if we all, if the music stops and we all say, oh, bank, can we get our money back? The bank is going to collapse. So there is this sort of fundamental risk built into um, the banking system. And so we have bank runs. This is called a bank run when this happens. Um, you know, we they're famous, you know, from the 1930s, there were like tons of bank runs. So we have that. And um, unfortunately, 
for the world, but fortunately for econ teachers, we have a nice example of a bank run um, in 2023 when the Silicon Valley Bank and a few other banks uh, failed after there was a run on their deposits where this classic um, example happened where all the depositors went, hey, we're worried about the bank. Give us our money back. And then there was a run on the bank and the bank um, fails. So students may remember this depending on when, <laughs> when you're teaching this, when you're watching this. Um, if not, you can remind them um, of this. And we have the uh, a news article, article linked there. Okay. So what happens? Why, why would we all go ask for our money back? Well, maybe we think the bank has maybe made some bad investments and is going to fail. And so we want to get our money back out before the bank goes under because it made all these bad bets. But notice that even if the bank is totally fine, even if the bank has made a bunch of good investments, um, if we all ask for our money back, the bank will fail. So even like unfounded rumors will cause a um, bank run and a bank fail. And you could talk about like in the social media age, the, you know, the sort of, the way this can work is like, it's like hypercharged. So in that Silicon Valley bank example, some people even blame Twitter for it because of how fast, um, you know, concerns about the solvency of Silicon Valley bank, how fast that spread on, uh, on social media. Okay. So this is the banking system, fractional reserve banking, right? Interest rates are at the core of it. They're going to give you some interest on your deposits. They're going to charge people a higher interest rate. When they loan your money out, that's how they make money. Because they are doing this, because this is the way banks works, there is this fundamental risk of if everyone asks for their money back, we'll have a bank run, the bank will collapse. Okay. Now to drive this home, you can play a simple game with your students and say, all right, you all have $100. Each period, you can invest that $100 in a long-term asset that will give you $10 in return or a short-term asset that pays only $1. You can't split your $100 up. Okay. Now, each period, there's a small chance that the depositors ask for their money back. So, and if they do this and you've chosen that $10 option instead of the $1 option, you um, lose. Okay. And so you play this with your students. You could play this with your students. And so you basically you say, okay, round one, what does everyone do? Everyone writes down what they want to do. Um, and then you can use a random number generator to, to give a chance that the, um, uh, that the bank fails. So I think we recommend doing a random number generator one through 10. And so if one comes up, um, the uh, uh, there's a run on the bank. And so everybody who had put their money in $10 um, will go under. So you can play this and see, you know, see what happens. See, you know, see if that conservative strategy works or, you know, going $10 works. Um, and again, it's just to simulate um, this idea of the bank run where, you know, if you put your money in this sort of long-term asset where you can't get the money out easily and, and everyone asks for their money back, you know, your bank's going under. They're out of um, the game. All right. Now, you can gesture um, in the exit ticket. What we're, what we're gesturing to is, all right, you know, imagine somebody guaranteed um, your money. Um, so imagine if I said, all right, even if you go into long-term assets, um, you know, I'll cover you. All right, would you be more or less likely to take the long-term asset, asset? And so what we're gesturing about here is what we're going to cover in day two. You can get the monetary policy unit plan here or click for the next video.